there's one motorcycle that every stable needs no matter how many bikes you have. If you don't have one of these bikes in your stable, you're missing the boat. On this video, I'm going to explain that specific bike to you. Why currently it's the most popular category in motorcycles around the world. And why you need to have one. Hey, how you doing? This is Bronx Brothers Motorcycles and my name is Richie. On today's video, we're going to talk about a specific bike that has taken the world over. I'm going to explain to you what makes these bikes so special. Why are they the most popular category of motorcycles in the world? And what are the benefits of owning one? Well, let's cut to the chase. The bike in question is an adventure motorcycle. What brand? It doesn't matter. Every major manufacturer has an adventure bike representing their brand. Some are well known for years and years. There's the original, that's the BMW GS. But, like I said, every major manufacturer has one. Who would have thunk it, just a few years ago Harley Davidson came out with theirs and pretty much blew up the internet. People who dislike Harley Davidson fell in love with this bike. They couldn't find anything wrong with it. Now in retrospect, there have been a few problems that have come up, but Harley Davidson has fixed those problems and these bikes are awesome. They come with the Rev Max engine, which is an incredible engine. It pumps out 150 horsepower. That is mind boggling to somebody like me. I own a 1992 ZX11 with 145 horsepower. Back in the early 90s, it was known as the king of speed. 145 horsepower on a sport bike. That thing is a bullet. Now, the RevMax engine is pumping out 150. I would have never believed it if I didn't read it myself. This video is not only about Harley Davidson, so those of you who are not Harley Davidson fans, relax. I'm going to be talking about different brands as well, but most important, what makes these bikes special? Now, getting back to the Harley Davidson, my friend owns one. He rode it from Virginia Beach, Virginia to Jacksonville, Florida. It's about a 600 mile trip. He did that recently and he told me that the bike was very comfortable and performed flawlessly all the way down to Florida. So that is a testament of the quality of this bike. Now I will say if you're going to buy a Pan America, do not buy the first year they came out. I believe it was 2020. That's the one you don't want. They had not worked the bugs out on it. Now let's talk about adventure bikes and why they're the most popular category in the world. What makes them so popular? Let me start by telling you. When I explain to people why I like my adventure bike, I tell them it's kind of like owning a Jeep. Where the road ends, that's where the fun begins. But it has many other attributes, so let's go down the list. A lot of people use these bikes as touring bikes to go across the country. So that right there tells you that they're comfortable. Now, are they as comfortable as an Electroglide or let's say a K1600 GT? No, there's no way. Those bikes are called road sofas for a reason, but they are comfortable nonetheless. Just like many touring bikes, you have seat options on these bikes, you have backrests, you have things to make your ride more comfortable. Now, the other thing that they come with and why people choose them is they come with saddlebags, or as they say in the adventure world, they call them panniers. I guess it's a French word for bags. Some of them have a top case, which if you own a Japanese bike, you call it a trunk. Harley Davidson's calls it a tour pack and the Europeans call it a top case. So, very convenient with the saddlebags, panniers, whatever you want to call them, and the top case. You can take loads of stuff with you to wherever it is that you're going. What else makes them so popular? Well, just like all modern day bikes, they come with anti-lock braking, 
They have hand warmers. They have seat warmers. Some of them have adjustable windscreens. Now I'd say I know a little bit more about the BMW GS than any other bike. The BMW has what they call a wonder wheel located on your left grip or near your left grip rather. On that wonder wheel you can control everything on the screen as you're riding. So it's kind of like a mini computer. You can bring up everything. You can bring up traction control. You can shut off ABS. You can control your music on your phone because you can connect the phone to the motorcycle itself. The BMW, as you can imagine, in electronics has it down pat. Now it also has modes. So it has rain mode, sport, dirt, all that kind of stuff like that. You can control your GPS from the Wonder Wheel. It is an amazing bike and that's why you see so many of them. Now how did I get into these bikes? About five or six years ago I watched a show called The Long Way Round and on that show is Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman and they went from England all the way through Europe, Eastern Europe, into Russia, came out the other side into Siberia and from there they threw their bikes on a plane and went to Alaska. From Alaska they went across, dipped down into the US and ended up in New York City. So they went all the way around the world on bikes. It's an excellent show. It's actually a series. You can find it on Prime. The Long Way Round. And that's what got me into it. Matter of fact, the bike that I have is the BMW R1150 GS. Is the bike that they use to go around the world. So I learned a lot about my bike. So without a doubt, that is the show that got so many people into adventure bikes. Now, that show has been so popular, they're on their third one. They did the first one, The Long Way Round. Then they did The Long Way Down, which was from Ewan McGregor's hometown in Scotland all the way down to South Africa. And most recently, they did The Long Way Up. They did it from the tip of Argentina, Tierra del Fuego, all the way up to Los Angeles. Now what happened during that show is, COVID took over the world. So, they kind of had to cut it short and hightail it when they were in Mexico. But they did make it up to Los Angeles. And on that one, they did it on electric bikes. Actually, Harley Davidson electric bikes. So that's what got a guy like me who grew up in the New York City area not riding dirt to get into an adventure bike. So I started this channel almost four years ago. And the sole intent was to share my passion of motorcycles. Now... I'm always showing street bikes, but I want to show you all another part of motorcycling that I really love. And if you ever have a chance to ride an adventure bike, make sure you do it. And make sure you come back and let me know. Because I will tell you, I love this bike. I love my other bikes, but this bike right here has a special place in my heart. It's just a ride. It's where I can go with it. I've been off-road with it various times. I've been off-road on a KTM, so adventure bikes is something that I truly believe you will enjoy if you give it a chance, if you haven't yet done so. So let's talk about this bike. What have I done to it? Well, I put this larger screen on it. I put this bar on here. I put the bill. This is called the bill, like a duck bill put these lights which really light up the night they do a hell of a job lighting up the night I put this cage it's a heat cage I put this headlight protector I got this little bag for it same company that makes the crash bars I put these bags on it these soft bags it came with suitcase type BMW bags hard I didn't like them they made the bike look not like an adventure bike I put the decals on it the big GS that was a big change as well as the one on the bill here I put those decals which really livened up the bike and made it look more modern with the cage, I have my GPS, my Garmin GPS, and I have all kind of mounts, as you can see. 
This is a waterproof switch for the lights. The lights really light up the night. Incredibly so. I put the tires, put these knobbies on here. These are 6040 street. So 60 off road, 40 street. Change the oil, just basic stuff. I haven't even put brake pads on it. It has Brembo brakes, four piston on each, double disc. It's shaft drive, no maintenance. <coughs> I cleaned up the wheels. The back one's a little dusty. That is because I took it to the BDR in the Blue Ridge Mountains. But I had them nice and clean. That took me probably three hours to get between all those spokes. And I will say this fairing, this not fairing, but this windscreen acts as a fairing. And it does a really good job. So this one is extra large compared to what was available. That is considered the GSA. The A is for adventure. The top of the line. The big dog. Suspension is really good on this bike. Mirrors are stock. Everything works. All the gauges work. The signal lights are like a Harley where if you want to go right, you click on the right side. If you want to go left, you click on the left side. I have a few bikes and it takes me a couple of seconds to get used to all the different controls. But I really like this bike. So maybe you're watching this and wondering, where can I ride a bike like this? I live near a big city. I live in an area where there's not a lot of country roads or back roads or dirt roads or things like that. Well, there's a non-profit company out there and it's called BDR, Back Discovery Routes. And they are making their way through each and every state. Here in Virginia, we have what's called the Mid-Atlantic BDR. It starts at the southern tip of western Virginia, over by the Blue Ridge Mountains, and it works its way up. It goes up through Virginia, cuts into West Virginia, a piece of Maryland, Pennsylvania, and then it goes all the way up to the border of New York State. In New York State, they have the Northeast BDR. The Northeast BDR runs from New York State all the way up to Maine, way to the top of Maine. They just mapped out a BDR route in Georgia. So that is what this company does. They make maps of fire roads and gravel roads, dirt roads that exist in rural areas that we're not aware of. So they put it on a map, you put it on your GPS, and you go. Usually there's a lot of small towns to stay at, and these towns now cater to adventure riders. They welcome you with open arms. I'd like to close with what these bikes are and what they are not. They are adventure bikes. They are big bikes with lots of power. They have a lot of creature comforts. They're not a full touring bike. As you can see, they have wind protection, but kind of like a cruiser, it doesn't protect your legs. So you're going to get some wind on your legs. That's why you see these guys dressed the way they are. These suits that they wear have padding as well as rain protection and wind protection. These guys wear boots. The boots that I wear are not big and cumbersome. They're quite comfortable for boots. These bikes can tour just like any other touring bike. They have good fuel range. They're water cooled. They have plenty of storage compartments to carry all your stuff and your partner if you ride like that. Now I'd like to point out 
the trip that we did to California, we rented bikes out there. There's a company called Riders Share, and you can get a bike anywhere from $60 to $100. You can get a BMW GS, the big one, for about 90 bucks, 95 bucks. And if you're out west, you got the roads. So if you're wanting to try something like this before you buy, that is the best way to do it. We rented adventure bikes in San Francisco. We rode through the Redwoods and then down to Los Angeles. Once in Los Angeles, we spent the night and then we went into the Mojave Desert where we had a blast. We had a lot of fun on these bikes. They're very reliable. Like I said, they're water cool and have all the creature comforts. So we had a really good time and checked off one item from the bucket list. Now we're excited to go elsewhere probably another country if God permits. Well, we've come to the end of the video. If you haven't yet done so, I'd appreciate it if you give it a like. And with that being said, if you haven't subscribed, that would be even better. Maybe you don't know, but I own a variety of bikes. Eight bikes in all. Four are registered, and those are the ones I normally ride. On this channel, we talk about all types of motorcycles as you can see. Also I do videos on gear reviews, parts, parts installation, everything and anything that has to do with motorcycles. I'm a motorcycle nut so it doesn't matter to me what brand, what kind of motorcycle, just as long as it has two wheels. Anyway, you all take care. Watch out with the crazy people on the roads and I hope to catch you on the next one. Adios.